meeting is now in session. Uh, first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes, and we have two sets of minutes to approve, so let's look at the ones from October 15th first. Does anyone have any comments, corrections, or questions about the minutes? Motion to approve the October 15th, 2019 minutes. Second. Second. All in favor? It's unanimous. I'm, I'm, I'm oh, staying sorry, I Jim. There. Okay, and then next is the minutes from the November 5th special planning board meeting. Any questions, comments, motion? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? I have to abstain, I wasn't there. Okay, it's almost unanimous. <laughs> <laughs> that 10% is always a problem. All right. Next item on the agenda. David Jacobson is returning to the planning board to request minor subdivision review of a four lot commercial subdivision in the town center located at 326 Ocean House Road. Included in the application are parallel amendments to the site plan approved for 326 Ocean House Road in May 2019 and the site plan approved for 320 Ocean House Road, the town hall lot in July 1991. The concurrent review will include compliance with minor subdivision review section 1623 and site plan amendments uh, section 1996. The uh, first item will be a review for completeness after which we will have a public comment session and then we can take up the matter. So John, would you like to get up? Good evening, uh, John Mitchell, Mitchell Associates. Um, so, as we have uh, discussed in the past and previous presentations, um, Ocean House Common is a multi-use uh, village green style development on the 4.1 acre site at 326 Ocean House Road. Um, since we received our approvals uh, last May, uh, there has been an increased uh, interest in the development in terms of the other, uh, the other lots associated with the development. And consequently, um, a decision was made by Dr. Jacobson to uh, create a subdivision with individual lots for each of the four lot pad sites uh, for marketing purposes and to complete the infrastructure um, of the entire development at, at this time rather than phase it. Um, also, uh, as the chairman uh, outlined associated with this application, or, uh, concurrently with this application, we're submitting a, an amended site plan for uh, the phase one Ocean House Common. There's just been a few uh, revisions made to that site plan, as well as uh, an amended site plan for the town hall lot where the road, our road, will connect to the, the town hall. Just to refresh the board uh, with what has been approved, this is the site plan that was approved in May, um, showing um, Dr. Jacobson's building uh, located on what now is going to be lot two, um, along with the access road coming in, uh, a total of 20 parking spaces, and the development of the Village Green. Right. 
So this is a copy of the master plan, which you've seen before, um, showing the four separate buildings, uh, the, <coughs> the access road, or the loop road connecting from Ocean House Road to the town hall lot, um, all of the parking, the walkways, the development of the village green, uh, the open space in the, in the rear of the property. Okay, so beginning with the beginning with the subdivision plan, um, so the the additional site features from the previous approved plan, I've identified the items on the right, beginning with um, the road pavement. Uh, if you remember, we uh, phased the access road in terms of the pavement um, for, the lat for the northerly 200 feet of road where it connects to the town hall lot. We were going to temporarily um, construct a gravel road so it would be paved from Ocean House Road to, um, to a point just past the, this thing's not working, just past the, um, the, the first building. Uh, so we intend to construct and pave the entire road, as well as the parking spaces. Uh, we, we received approval for 20 parking spaces associated with uh, the dentist practice, and um, we are now going to construct the entire road with the parking, uh, which totals 71 parking spaces. Similarly, with the sidewalks, the, uh, all of the sidewalks will be constructed, uh, including the sidewalk that connects the northerly part of the development with uh, the village green. Utility extensions will be uh, extended uh, to service lots three and four. There were three light fixtures that were part of phase two, which will now be uh, installed. Um, there, a single transformer uh, has been added, which will provide service to lots three and four. And all of the plantings uh, will be done for the development. Can I have you just clarify one thing? Sure. Quick? So the stripes will all be put in? The parking, parking spaces, space. yes. And the, can you just say what's going on in that, where you have those dashed parking spots? Yes, I was going to get to that, but okay. um, uh, we have we have we have uh, shown what we're calling reserve parking. Um, they will not be built at this time, but uh, we're showing them on the plan to get approval for them so we don't have to come back to the planning board if, if necessary. Um, they're, as you can see, they're double stacked and would be uh, parking for the residential apartments if needed. And then the... Um, The third application is an amended site plan for the town hall lot. And the bold square at the bottom of the plan is the area that will be, um, will be modified, um, showing the, the roadway from our development from, town, uh, from Ocean House Common, the connection to the town hall lot. Uh, this will remove five of the existing parking spaces in this location. However, the, uh, the removal of the recycling containers in the, the rear of the town hall will allow us to stripe 12 additional parking spaces for a net increase of seven parking spaces to the town hall lot. So this is the 1991 site plan uh, which we uh, were able to get from uh, Marine 
in her records. Um, we made a uh, digital copy of it uh, to show the, the uh, amended uh, area. The next thing I would like to discuss uh, is the Village Green. Um, as you know, we, uh, the development of the Village Green was approved as part of phase one uh, that shows the walkway, um, the filling of, of this area, the focal point, uh, which included benches and flagpole uh, lighting, um, in addition to this, we are proposing to, uh, there it is, we're proposing to take this area that is being utilized for our stormwater management and to, uh, Dr. Jacobson is uh, proposing to donate this land uh, to the town uh, so that would make a combined acreage of uh, approximately three quarters of an acre uh, when you combine the the two village green areas. Parking. Um, can I, yes. Can I just ask one question on? Uh, is the um, is the planned village green still going to have that sort of uh, that slope down in in the middle? As, it will. It okay. will still function as our stormwater management. Okay. Yeah. All right, thanks. Yeah. Um, parking is very important to the success of this project. And we've come up with um, a, a series of different arrangements, parking arrangements. Um, the first is the, um, the 71 spaces that I mentioned uh, that is part of the, the master plan. Um, in addition to that are the 11 reserve parking spaces, um, which we spoke about. And we've added a note to the plan, if you've noticed it, um, that says 11 spaces in reserve as needed. Planning board shall revisit parking demand when lot three or four is developed. So as you know, when lot three or, four, or lot one, three and four, when they, are planning to be developed, the applicant will come before you with a site plan and um, for a site plan approval. And at that time, uh, the planning board can review the parking demand and um, see whether or not we need the additional 11 spaces. Uh, we've also are requesting uh, provisions for shared parking and in your application booklet, uh, we have come up with a table uh, outlining the number of parking spaces that, uh, that are required for each of the four lots uh, with anticipated uses. Um, the anticipated uses that we've outlined would include office or retail on the first floor, and apartments on the second floor. And, um, and we've come up with the number, and this is a very conservative, um, um, the, the number of units and number of square feet for each of the buildings uh, is, is the maximum that would be allowed for, for these buildings. And then in the last column, uh, we have come up with possible shared parking numbers. We've come up with a total of 11 spaces, which basically is 60% of the, uh, the number of required parking spaces for residential apartments. So, and this is all, uh, this is all 
based on the fact that non-residential uses have different parking demands than non uh, than uh, residential apartments, and I believe the town has done this in the past. Are those eleven spots identified on the plan? Are they what? Are they located on the plan? No, they could they could be any of the seventy-one spaces. Can you speak in the and then the and then the uh, the last uh, parking arrangement is that uh, we are pursuing a parking license agreement with the town of Cape Elizabeth uh, to use up to ten parking spaces at the rear of the town hall, and we're going through town council uh, for that agreement presently. The next item are waivers. Um, see, uh, <clears throat> uh, we're, we're requesting three waivers and they're all associated with the private road. And it all has to do with the uniqueness of this private road. Um, and I say uniqueness because this roadway is part of a, obviously it has parking on either side. Uh, it's not your typical private road with just the, the traveled way. Uh, we have parking on either sides and it was very difficult to uh, adhere to all of the standards of the private road ordinance. Uh, so the first waiver would be right of way width. We're proposing a width of 44 feet versus 50 feet. And we're, we need the 44 because uh, the one edge of the right of way line is runs along the back end of the parking closest to the buildings. And we need that 25 feet for the front setbacks to the building. Uh, the second waiver is road alignment, uh, the center line road alignment, and is it has a deviation of, of approximately, oh no, not approximately, 10 feet, has a deviation of 10 feet uh, from the true right of, uh, true center line of the road right of way. And again, this has to do with the parking uh, layout. And then the third one is center line radius. The ordinance calls for uh, private road to be uh, 125 foot minimum center line radius. We're showing 102, and this is the this curve right here is the center line radius that I'm referring to. So those are the three waivers that we're requesting. Uh, I think we we shared these with you during the workshop meeting. <coughs> In terms of architecture, uh, this is a perspective rendering showing the front of the building and uh, the, the change here includes a 20 foot extension on the right hand side um, or a total of 850 square feet on the footprint. Uh, which will allow Dr. Jacobson's Jacobson uh, additional um, client rooms uh, for treatment, for treatment rooms. And it will also allow to include one additional apartment. So rather than two apartments that we received approval from you on the, in May, uh, the, uh, the uh, total would be three. Um, but but um, the elements of the architecture are, have not changed. It's the same same uh, layout. We've just extended it uh, 20 feet, and we've also met the 51% uh, ratio for openings. Uh, stormwater management. Uh, we have noted uh, all of Steve Harding's comments and we have actually we've, we've made all the revisions to the plan uh, we're ready to uh, 
to submit our, our comments uh, to the town, um, addressing all of Steve Harding's comments on stormwater management, as well as comments that have to do with um, the, the site plan and subdivision plan. Um, and then finally, finally, uh, uh, there was a, on Marine's memo, there was an additional comment uh, regarding sidewalks, an additional sidewalk. Um, and uh, we feel that we have, in the development of this master plan, we feel that we have uh, addressed and satisfied the Village Green um, intent and guidelines by incorporating the, all the sidewalks in the Village Green one uh, design, as well as the sidewalk that parallels the, the parking. Um, and we've added a, uh, a sidewalk that connects this portion of the property to the Village Green, and we've got the sidewalk out along Ocean House Road. Um, the, uh, the, the, the people coming from the south um, along Ocean House Road, if they want to get to any of the four buildings, they will, they will uh, walk along here and then they'll take a right and walk along our new walkway to access each of the four buildings. If they want to go to the Village Green, they'll continue walking down the Ocean House Road walkway and access the Village Green at this point. If they want to go to the Town Hall, they'll continue walking. Um, if they want to, uh, people coming from the south, if they want to get to this portion of the property, um, I would anticipate them doing this uh, or this. People coming from the south, again, they would uh, enter the Village Green here. If they want to go to the buildings, they would walk along our, um, our walkway that goes along the, uh, the, the um, the parking lot. We just don't feel it's it's necessary. We think it's uh, extremely redundant to add another walk on this side of the roadway. Um, we just don't we just don't see people using it. Um, it will impact the grading and drainage significantly because everything sheet runs off into this area here for stormwater management. Uh, we could never put a curb there um, and raise the walkway. Um, I mean, we could, but we'd, we'd have to put curbing and catch basins and storm drain pipe. Um, it would add to the, uh, it would add to the in, uh, impervious surface calculation. Um, this walkway is 535 feet long and we just feel, you know, why, why put another 535 foot walkway which uh, we feel won't be used. So, um, as you can see, we're, we're opposed to, to doing that. Um, I think that's it. Um, I'd be glad to answer any questions. Do any of you have any specific questions? Do any of you have any specific questions about anything on this? Yeah, I, I just have one question. It's actually more for Maureen than um, for the applicant. I, I understand that, um, the, so in May we accepted the, the Village Green, um, the first, or the, the portion of it that would be uh, towards the west of the property, correct? Correct. Okay, um, I, I'm very uh, excited for the fact that the applicant wants to donate more property that would make the total amount about three quarters of an acre. Um, the only thing from a legal perspective that I just wanted to make sure that the town would be okay with and um, is if that second parcel 
is ensured to be part of the village green as opposed to two village greens because it, I know the ordinance that we created is for one village green. So I just wanted to make sure that we were covered, that we weren't all of a sudden creating two village greens right next to each other. And yeah. like I said, maybe I'm overthinking this. That's sometimes what attorneys do, but I just wanna make sure we're clear Perfectly on Perfectly adequate question. So um, the applicant donated a village green that exceeded our minimum standards. And when they did that, this qualified as village green development. Um, I just want to say the applicants have been strongly encouraged to donate the back because the original concept plan showed all of this being Village Green. So uh, now they're coming in for a subdivision and subdivision includes, and, and so for the original Village Green, the ordinance has specific requirements about deeding it to the town and has to be protected, et cetera. Um, the second piece, uh, they are donating in order to uh, fund a portion of the open space impact fee they're going to be required to pay. And so under the subdivision ordinance, the same, um, the same type of restrictions will apply. They're gonna be donating it to the town, there'll have to be language on it that restricts it from development. So I see it absolutely being managed as one piece owned by the town at some point in the future. Okay, I just want to make sure that we're in, in, clear uh, with regards to the legal perspective that somebody doesn't say, okay, these are two village greens when the ordinance only says one village green. Well, I mean, it doesn't cap it. It's just that there are very few properties that would ever be able to meet the requirements. Yep. So I, I think the, the, I don't think there's anything legally uh, that will obstruct this from being treated as one village green parcel. Okay. Thank you, and like I said, um, yeah, I'm, I'm good, thanks. Yes, Jim. Did you have your hand up? Um, this second part of the Village Green, I guess probably directed more at Maureen too. How, does this affect good or bad, how the town would have to deal with maintenance for that? Actually, the t that's, a, that's a question the town is looking at right now. I've had conversations both with the town engineer and with the public works director to look very hard at this um, because reviewing stormwater when you're not gonna be maintaining it is very different from reviewing stormwater when you are gonna be maintaining it. So that is happening right now. Um, one of the discussions has been the two focal points that are on the edges of this village green and the question is will the town be accepting those as part of the village green or are they going to be hanging out there as separate pieces that someone else will maintain and that's still happening as a discussion and I'm hoping, I'm hoping by your next meeting there will be an answer to that. Pete? I, I know we're just at the complete, uh, completeness uh, question now, and there are these other uh, site plans that will follow in due course. Uh, but John, the, the stormwater plan as it now exists, do we have everything that you're prepared to tell us now? And I, my understanding from the materials was basically they believe the stormwater system can handle the first parcel and all of the, the grading and landscaping, and it's expected as well that these, the additional site plans are not gonna add dramatic new Correct. capacity. Correct, yep. So we, we're not looking for a whole lot more to come on the site plan, uh, excuse me, on the stormwater, stormwater management system. Correct, yep. And uh, just one further thing on that is that um, we have, the master plan exceeds the one acre threshold with DEP. So we're, we're also in the process of applying for a DEP stormwater permit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think we got enough to d vote on Complete. complete completeness. So does anyone want to make a motion? Oh, wait. Yes. Uh, I'm going to open the meeting to public comment. And seeing no one here wishes to speak, uh, it's closed. Okay. Now, do I have a motion? Ready. Um, 
Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of David Jacobson for a four lot commercial subdivision located in the town center at 326 Ocean House Road and, and amendments to the 326 Ocean House Road site plan and town hall site plan located at 320 Ocean House Road be deemed complete. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? It's unanimous. Motion passes. Okay, so now we can begin our deliberation. First of all, let me just ask, does anybody feel a need for a sidewalk on this? No. no. We have had a sidewalk. We've had, had a sidewalk. sidewalk. Okay. Then. And everybody that was on that walk is here. I mean, I damn. believe so. I was there, like Andrew. She's pointing. Okay. Oh. You look pretty good about it. All right. Does anybody want to start with any comments or discussion? One, one thing that was brought up by the applicant, and I saw it in Maureen's memo about the sidewalk um, uh, around the Village Green. I, I wouldn't be too concerned about having that sidewalk um, added. I would be uh, with the applicant. I think it would, I think redundant's actually a, um, a good description. And uh, my other concern would be that the catch basins would right, would be located right around where um, a sidewalk that would kind of go around the entire village green parcel would be located and uh, I think it would might be counterintuitive to have that in uh, the sidewalk there which might interfere with what that second part of the village green would be um, so I'd be okay as uh, it's proposed right now Jim I guess I had a lot of questions can, uh, that were brought up about er, uh, in the town engineer's letter, but it sounds like you've addressed them already, so I see no need to actually go into it, and I guess you'll address them at the next meeting is what it is, all these, addressing all of Steve Harding's comments. Yes. Yeah. I assume so. that Steve Harding would review your modifications. Yeah, correct. So I don't see any need to take up time right yeah, now to I go agree. through all those. Carol Ann. I just want to say I, I agree with Jonathan, I think, uh, and I agree with the applicant. I think uh, the sidewalk on the inside of the road is redundant. Pete. Yeah, the, the only, uh, I, I agree that, that the full perimeter sidewalk on this side of the parking would be redundant. I do note, though, the uh, lots, parcels three and four do seem to have a connecting sidewalk that goes up the left-hand side. Parcels one and two don't. I suppose you could angle a sidewalk over to pick them up at the distance between the, uh, the semicircle of the village green and parcels one and two is really very, very slight, and I think that would be a, I, I think it would just be an expense and a, an intrusion on the natural landscape that isn't required. Peter, I'm not sure. Um, do you, you, this is a sidewalk here. No, no, I was talking about the one that goes from the from the semicircle of the village green goes up the left side. That oh. is a sidewalk, right? This right here. Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. So that, parcels three and four have that. Uh, Correct. But in one and two, you could do something similar. But I don't see the point. Just the distances. Small. John, on on that sidewalk, um, there was something in the memo about that being asphalt and the other parts being pavers. Is, is that what I read? Then yes. Would, would there any? Would there be any problem? I and mean, I'm not trying to add cost to the applicant because he's already generously donated um, this parcel. But it might be more consistent with that semicircle that's going to be pavers if. The other part wasn't, or are there more concerns about making that asphalt? Was there, well, what's the rationale there? The, the, the pervious pavers were placed here for stormwater management purposes. Oh, okay. So I was thinking and, it was look, and, but it's. And it's a very expensive treatment. Gotcha. Using the pervious pavers. 
and uh, the new sidewalk going through the Village Green too is would be asphalt. Okay, and so part of that is stormwater management or yeah. stability? Correct. Not just design? No, infiltration. Okay. It All allows right. the stormwater to infiltrate through the, the papers. All right, well, I'll leave that up to the, the engineers if they know better than me, so. John, can you go to the planting plan a second? Uh, I don't have the planting plan oh. on the PowerPoint. Um, Because I was going to say the planting changes except along the, that. Except, the, uh, except for this. <laughs> New computer, Mary. Sure, thank you. It's Caroline. the computer. She has a pen over there. She just keeps it. Right. But that's not, that doesn't really match up to what you've got in here that closely along. I was thinking that the trail along the, the back, which is going to be asphalt, has a different character to it. It kind of makes sense. You're breaking away from the formal semicircle and more formal planting. And I, I don't, I think that visually it makes sense to have that as asphalt. So. Which one is that? The one on the left. Yeah. On, yeah. I'm just saying I agree with Jonathan. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, so I've got a question maybe more for Maureen. Um, on the, that, on uh, the town receiving lot number, uh, uh, the uh, number two green space there, it seems like that's really the crux of draining that whole site and uh, could, I mean, that, is that something the town really wants to take on? Is that, what are the discussions of the maintenance like? Um, pretty intense. <laughs> uh, you know, there are places that have a stormwater function that most of the time are a very inviting open space. And the, the discussion that we've had from the beginning is, uh, is this basically just gonna be a stormwater function or is it going to be um, potentially a programmable portion of the Village Green? And the town engineer is still looking at it. Uh, there is a question about- By programmable, you mean like you can go have picnics on it or play right, volleyball? Right, right. I mean, we're, we're thinking it's going to be something that would be mowed at the same time the town would mow the village green one. So it's gonna have, it's definitely gonna have a slope down to a lower area, but it would still have the appearance of being one parcel. And that most of the time it would not be wet; it would be dry and functioning. But the, the Steve Harding, the town engineer, is is looking at that. Um, he's asked some questions about uh, rim elevations and where the catch basin is going to be, so that the water can be um, drained off of that area more quickly, or whether it's gonna be used for sto more for storage. And, and I think that the applicant and the town engineer and the public works director need to have another conversation to hopefully make sure everybody's on the same page and comfortable. How's that? I can tell you, Joe, that it's, it's not a infiltration detention basin. Uh, the water will, will sheet flow into the lower area. It will then drain to these focal points and discharge. Okay. Um, only at the very, you know, peak, peak storms uh, will it perhaps pond during those time, times, but uh, will quickly drain away. It's not designed as a detention basin. So Marine's right you know, the vast majority of the time it will be dry. Okay. 
All right, any other questions? Pete. Right, John, uh, on the uh, planting plan, and I may not have been reading it correctly, you have a planting schedule with the number of species identified and the numbers on the plan itself, some of them were identified as to species and some were sort of blank, uh, unless I was misreading it. Is that uh, like here, these are all identified to the schedule, these are not, these are not, is this? Uh, Whatever was approved in phase one is not. Oh, this is just, change, just yes. differences from phase one, okay. So we refer back to that. I have another question, John. Did you consult with the fire chief on the reduced radius on the curve in there? I did not. We can. Yep. Okay. Because the 24 foot width between the parking spaces, that's a normal. That's, that's the required standard. That's for two way traffic. Yes. There's plenty of room. Okay. Joe. Sorry, Carol Ann. Um, this might be getting way into the weeds, but I, I read, I read uh, Steve Harding's comments and the comments about that I understand about Cape Elizabeth being an MS4 community and therefore the town, this is the way I interpreted what I read and you tell me if I interpreted it correctly. The town, as part of that, the town is primarily responsible for the stormwater that comes off this site because we are an MS4 community and we take over the responsibility for this stormwater drainage system. Is, did I understand that correctly in my reading? I don't care, whoever. I'm gonna <laughs> go first then. Um, so, I mean, we have, we have been talking about this with the applicant for some time. They had originally designed that Village Green two areas more of a retention area and we pushed pretty hard that we didn't really want it to look like that. And the response was that we wanted the applicant to take advantage of the town's stormwater system. So instead of retaining it on the property, plug into the town's existing stormwater system and that means they're, they've got catch basins in the private road and they collect all the stormwater there and then they connect into a stormwater system that's in Ocean House Road. And once it gets to Ocean House Road, it's town stormwater. Okay. So, but if it's um, on the site, it's their stormwater. Un, it's yes. It comes off the right. site. That it's and in. so there are those two, um, the two, there are two um, collection areas, I guess is what I would call it on the north side of the site that are picking up uh, a lot of drainage from the town's parking lot, the town will be uh, receiving an easement for maintenance of those. So even though it's on private property, we're gonna still be taking care of those. Uh, and then the focal points is still under discussion, whether or not it's going to be the applicant who will be taking care of those or the town that will be taking care of those. I do also wanna let you know that the town did do a a stormwater study uh, for everything downstream of this project in, in the town center. And the study's not completely done. I read the final draft today, uh, but the conclusions are that we're not finding any significant flooding that will happen because of taking on the water from this project. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of David Jacobson for a four lot commercial subdivision located in the town center at 326 Ocean House Road and amendments to the 326 Ocean House Road site plan and town hall site plan located at 320 Ocean House Road be tabled to the regular December 17, 2019 meeting of the planning board at which time a public hearing will be held. Second. Um, discussion. Yeah, the, I have an item I wanted to discuss. Does I, I should have done this before I asked for the motion. Um, does anybody have an issue with the waivers requested? 
No. The no. only uh, the only one I might have is the radius, but we don't have a, la a hook and ladder, so maybe it doesn't really matter. Do, is that? Do you know? We do have a ladder. With the guy driving in the back? No, he drives in the front. I'm gonna get you a ride. <laughs> um, uh, you would ask the applicant to yes, reach okay. out to the fire chief, and, and the applicant has said they will do that. Right. And, and yes, the radius is tighter than we would normally see, but keep in mind that just the aisle width is 24 feet wide, right. and the the traveled paved service of a public road is 22 feet wide. So you've got a little, you, you've got yeah, some room to work room. with, plus there's actual another 18 feet of paved surface on either side of that where there may or may not be cars parked. All right, good. Continuing. Okay, we're done, we're ready for vote. All in favor? It's unanimous. The motion passes. Thank you, Thank you guys. All right, other business. Is there anybody who wishes to come forward and make a public comment? Seeing none. <laughs> Do we have a motion to adjourn? Make a motion, we adjourn. And you're just busy tonight, aren't you? I am, I'm just a mute. Okay. I have a second. <laughs> Jim? Okay. All in favor? It's unanimous. The motion passes. Take charge. Boom.